Paul's second epistle to Timothy, chapter 1, God's eternal purpose, 2 Timothy 1 verse 1 Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, an apostle is a sent one, Paul became the apostle of the Gentiles, not by choice, or by the will of men, but by the will of God, and he was sent to the Gentiles by Christ, Romans 11 verse 13 for I speak to you Gentiles, Inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. The promise of life, this is the promise of eternal life that God who cannot lie promised to himself before the world began. Titus 1 verse 2 in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Paul was an apostle according to that promise, as the one who would be God's pattern of his grace to all who should believe on Christ after him. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might chew forth all longsuffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul no longer was able to stay in his own hired house in Rome under house arrest, but was now in the infamous Mamertine prison awaiting his last day, when he would be beheaded for his faith. 2 Timothy 1 verse 2 to Timothy, My dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace, from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Timothy was saved under Paul's ministry, as he mentioned in his first epistle, and over the years he has become his dearly beloved son in the faith, because of all that they had gone through together. Grace, mercy, and peace. Paul adds the word mercy in all three of his pastoral epistles because Timothy and Titus needed to hear about God's mercy, as they had suffered along with Paul for the defense of the gospel. Titus 3 verse 5 Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. 2 Timothy 1 verse 3 I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. I thank God, Paul said he thanked God nine times in six different epistles. You should look up each occurrence sometime to see why Paul thanked God. Romans 1 verse 8 First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Romans 7 verse 25 I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 4 and 14 I thank my God always on your behalf, for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. I thank God that I baptize none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18 I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all. Philippians 1 verse 3 I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13 For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Philemon 1 verse For I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Paul tells Timothy that he continually prayed for him every day. That is the effect that working with someone on such a great cause can have with one another. 2 Timothy 1 verses 4 to 5 Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Being mindful of thy tears, when Paul had last seen Timothy, it was with much tears because they knew that it could be the last time that they would ever see one another. Paul was in prison, and Timothy had his failing health, and the ever-present danger of persecution around every corner. The unfeigned faith that is in thee, Timothy's faith was sincere. It lasted through all the trials and tribulations that he experienced ministering with the Apostle Paul. Sadly, there is no mention of any man in Timothy's family possessing faith. Paul was the strong male role model that Timothy needed in his life since his father and grandfather were not sadly. 2 Timothy 1 verses 6-7 Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Stir up the gift of God. The gift of God is not speaking about the gift of salvation, which is also mentioned in scripture, because no one can impart salvation to another by the laying on of an apostle's hands. Salvation is a gift of God given by grace through faith. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9. We do not have apostles today to give us these gifts, as they are no longer necessary because we have all the scripture we need for this age. We have all the hidden wisdom of God's mystery program because it was given to Paul to give to us. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 7 For I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God, 
one after this manner, and another after that. This gift had to do with an inner boldness that he possessed when times get tough. Timothy needed to be able to minister, not out of fear, but with of a sound mind that trusted in God's will. The putting on of my hands, Paul, as an apostle, had put his hands on Timothy in the early days, and he had imparted unto him a supernatural gift that Timothy would need to accomplish the job that God had called him to do. 2 Timothy 1 verse 8 Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Be not thou therefore ashamed. Paul knew that Timothy was fearful because of all the battles that had been raging with Paul concerning Nero's persecutions. Because all of the churches of Asia had turned their backs on Paul doctrinally because of the new revelations he had received from Christ. People were teaching other things, and refuting things that Paul had taught them previously. Paul and Timothy were preaching to the Gentiles, and proclaiming the blinding of Israel, which you can understand would not be very popular with the Jews. The afflictions of the gospel, the main reason that dispensationalism has not grown as much as it should today, is because many of us are not willing to be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. According to the power of God, the power of God is defined for us in, 7 as the spirit of power, that is within each believer at the moment they believe the gospel which reminds us not to fear circumstances but trust in God's will. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 Who hath saved us, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And holy calling, according to God's own purpose he called before the world began, all who were going to be saved with an holy calling to fulfill his will making all men see what the fellowship of the mystery is, he did not predestine anyone to be saved. Ephesians 3 verses 8 to 9 unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2 verses 3 to 4 For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. In Christ Jesus before the world began, when we are saved, we are placed into Jesus Christ. He is the head, and we are his body. His eternal purpose was eternally in Christ before we were born or before the world began because it was his eternal purpose. It was just not revealed until Christ revealed it to the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy 1 verse 10, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. But is now made manifest, the grace that was given before the world began is now being made manifest because of the cross, and what happened three days later on our behalf. Paul had to remind Timothy that Christ has abolished death, and given eternal life to all who believe the gospel that was given to Paul. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26. By the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, this refers to Jesus appearing to him on the road to Damascus, and at later times when he made manifest to him the mystery, which had been kept secret from the foundation of the world, but now was made manifest. Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 10. Who hath abolished death? Jesus died our death for us. Death had no hold over Jesus because he was not guilty of any sins. Hebrews 4 verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Romans 6 verse 23 The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, not the gospel of the kingdom that was preached solely to Israel by the John the Baptist, Jesus and the twelve apostles to the nation of Israel. Romans 6 verse 23, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus died that we might have eternal life if we believe the gospel of the grace of God that is found in Paul's epistles alone. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. This gospel Paul calls my gospel in numerous places. Romans 2 verse 16 In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Romans 16 verse 25 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, 
which was kept secret since the world began. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8 Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. This gospel was committed unto Paul as the apostle of the Gentiles. Galatians 2 verse 7 But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. 1 Timothy 1 verse 11 According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. 2 Timothy 1 verse 11 Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. I am appointed. Paul was appointed to be all the above things so that he could fulfill God's will for us today, which was determined before the world began, to preach the gospel to all the world so that God's creation can have communion with him for eternity. If you are a preacher today, you did not have a Damascus Road experience like Paul did. You volunteered. People are not appointed today by a vision, but by a desire to reach people with the gospel. 1 Timothy 3 verse 1 This is a true saying, If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. 2 Timothy 1 verse 12 For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. For the which cause I suffer these things, the cause for which Paul was suffering was the will of God for this dispensation. That which I have committed unto him, Paul had committed his life to preaching the message that God gave to him until his death. 2 Timothy 1 verses 13 to 14 Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me, the sound doctrine of Pauline truths concerning the mystery program that Jesus Christ revealed unto the apostle of the Gentiles. That good thing which was committed unto thee, Paul put into Timothy's trust the mystery program of God that had been revealed unto him, and he now had the responsibility to keep it alive by sharing it with others. Keep by the Holy Ghost, the only way he could do that was by the power of the Holy Ghost because Satan was around every corner trying to discourage Timothy to quit or to trim his message. Be a person of prayer, so you will have the strength to stand against doctrinal compromise. 2 Timothy 1 verse 15 This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogens. All they which be in Asia be turned away from me. The church started to reject Paul's unique message concerning the mystery, because of the Judaizers trying to bring them into the bondage of the law. Paul's message was quickly finding little room in the churches, because it called people to action regardless of the danger, and to confront those bringing in other doctrines, instead of welcoming them. 2 Timothy 1 verses 16 to 18 The Lord give mercy unto the house of Anisiphorus, for he oft refreshed me, and was not ashamed of my chain, but when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently, and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day, and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well, that he might find mercy in that day. Paul is telling Timothy to pray for Anisiphorus that he would be strong in that day, which is when Anisiphorus would face the executioner's axe. It is very possible that they were both killed at the same time. Chapter 2 Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth 2 Timothy 2 verses 1-2 to Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. The things that thou hast heard of me, the things are the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20 verse 24, which is found in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. The same commit thou to faithful men. One of the biggest mistakes we can make in the ministry, is that of not training others to do what we have been trained to do. Notice the plural form, men, instead of a men chosen by Paul. Paul literally trained lots of men in his 25-year ministry, and he taught them to do the same thing. He was not trying to keep everyone in one spot to build a big church, he had a global vision. We are to follow Paul as our pattern for planting churches. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might chew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 16 Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Philippians 3 verse 17 Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 6 And ye became followers of us, and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost. 2 Timothy 2 verses 3 to 4 Thou therefore endure hardness, 
as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Endure hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, here Paul encouraged Timothy like a good soldier that endures the hardness of long costly battles and who keeps on fighting. Paul did not want Timothy to be entangled with the affairs of this life, so that he could be engaged in the spiritual battle that was in front of him. You do not win battles without getting into the fight in the first place. Who hath chosen him to be a soldier of Jesus Christ? All believers have been chosen to be a good soldier before the world began. This is not speaking of only a select group of people that are pastors who God alone has chosen to be soldiers. 2 Timothy 2 verse 5 And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. If a man also strive for masteries, Paul chose a metaphor of an athlete that wants to master his sport, and to be crowned for doing it without taking any shortcuts. Pursue understanding God's word today like an athlete trying to win an Olympic medal with no doctrinal compromises along the way. A soldier must learn how to fight the enemy and master his skill. We fight the enemy today, not with carnal weapons, but with the word of God rightly divided, which is what is meant by striving lawfully. 2 Timothy 2 verse 6 The husbandman that labyrinth must be first partaker of the fruits. The husbandman that labyrinth, Paul wants Timothy and us to know that just as a farmer is the first to eat part of his own crop, so the minister that labors in the word should be taken care of first out of the offerings of God's people. Why did Paul have to teach this to Timothy? Sadly, many churches give their pastor a meager salary, or none at all. 2 Timothy 2 verse 7 Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Consider what I say, if this were to be followed today, we would not have all these denominations each saying something else because they would all be listening to the same voice. The Lord give thee understanding in all things. Paul says that if you will consider what he says, the message that God gave him to give to us for today, that the Lord will give you understanding in all things. All things that a local church needs to know is found in the epistles of Paul, who is the apostle of the Gentiles in this dispensation of grace. Paul received an abundance of revelations that was kept hidden in God from before the foundation of the world, but now has been made manifest, and people are ignorant of most it. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26, and Ephesians 3 verses 8 to 9. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8 Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my, Paul's, gospel not according to the gospel of the kingdom that the twelve were preaching to Israel. Peter when preaching on the day of Pentecost and afterwards mentions the cross and Christ's resurrection, but not as the good news that his hearers must trust in to receive the forgiveness of their sins. When Peter preaches of Jesus' crucifixion, he condemns his countrymen as the killers of their Messiah and tells them they should repent of their wickedness. Peter tells his hearers that their king is in exile now until his enemies be made his footstool, whereas Paul's gospel declares the cross as good news to the world, and that Christ is now the head of the church, which is his body. Peter declared God's wrath against Israel and his enemies in Acts 2 and 3, whereas Paul is preaching that God is dispensing grace to his hearers and forgiveness. These are two different gospels to two distinct groups of people. One was Israel with the gospel of the circumcision, and the other was to the whole world with the gospel of the uncircumcision. 2 Timothy 2 verse 9 Wherein I suffer trouble, as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Paul was suffering imprisonment, bonds, because he was proclaiming the gospel of grace, Acts 20 verse 24, that many Jews would have nothing to do with it, and fought Paul reaching out to the Gentiles at every turn. Jail may have bound Paul physically, but the word of God was still going forth. Paul was still able to get his epistles out to Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. 2 Timothy 2 verse 10 Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I endure all things for the elect's sakes. Paul instructed Timothy to keep on serving the Lord even if it meant he would end up in the prison as Paul was, and even if it meant his life. Paul told Timothy that he endured all things so that others could be saved if they would only believe what he was teaching them. Romans 8 verse 33, 2 Timothy 2 verses 11 to 13 It is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. It is a faithful saying, Paul, then says for things that are true, or faithful in this dispensation of grace. If we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Paul is talking about believing his gospel in. 11 In that if we by faith trust in his death, burial, and resurrection then we died with Christ, Romans 6 verse 3, and we now live with him that was raised from the dead. If we suffer, 
we shall also reign with him. In verse 12 Paul is talking about receiving a reward for our suffering. We are not persecuted because we do not take the same stands for Christ anymore when confronted with darkness, the lies of the devil. If we deny him, he also will deny us. This is speaking of those who have not believed the gospel in the first place. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself, God is faithful, and the truth is still the truth, and he will never deny himself even if we personally quit believing in Christ. He is faithful when we are not, if you get saved and later become angry about some injustice, and you begin to doubt his existence, he is still faithful in keeping you saved because you are in him, and he cannot deny himself. 2 Timothy 2 verse 14 of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Of these things put them in remembrance, these were the doctrinal teachings concerning the mystery program that were delivered unto the Apostle Paul. Strive not about words to no profit. We are to charge them not to strive with others in the church about things that will take us off the course that God wants us on of rightly dividing the word of truth. It will be of no profit except for the devil as the hearers of that striving will be subverted in their faith instead of built up. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to shew thyself approved unto God. Paul uses the metaphor here of a workman that must study long and hard to learn his craft so that he may build something that his employer would approve of. Rightly dividing the word of truth, the craftsman must learn what tools and building material will be necessary to do the job. We cannot build the church on Israel's kingdom program and expect it to be approved by God, but that is what everyone is doing who does not rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 verses 16 to 18, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Shun profane and vain babblings, Paul gives Timothy an example of two people who did not study enough of what Paul had told them. They came up with the wrong conclusion that the resurrection was already past, and it had disastrous effects. Hymenaeus, he was one of two that Paul delivered over to Satan to learn not to blaspheme. This was a reference to turning him over to God who would allow Satan to destroy him. 1 Timothy 1 verse 20 Their word will eat as doth a canker. Canker is the Greek word gagrena, where we get the word gangrene from. Their doctrines turn into a cancer-like plague in every church they spew their messages, having no clue as Paul once did, that they are actually working against God and not on his behalf. Zeal without knowledge is dangerous. The resurrection is already past. The resurrection for a believer in the dispensation of grace is the rapture for those who have died already. The dead in Christ shall rise first from the dead, and we which are alive and remain will simply be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and our bodies will be changed at that time without dying. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 to 17 And overthrow the faith of some, what would a person was taught the rapture came after they trusted Jesus Christ? They would think that they must not be saved, and they would become discouraged. 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 Nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, if a person knows how to rightly divide the word of truth, he will not fall prey to Satan's false teachers. Satan thrives on ignorance. The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The foundation of God is the gospel of the grace of God. The Lord knoweth them that are his, even when we do not feel like we are saved, he can see his seal upon us. We cannot. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22, Who hath also sealed us, and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Ephesians 1 verse 13 In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4 verse 30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If we want to build ourselves and others up in Christ, we should depart from iniquity which will only tear down what Christ wants to build. 2 Timothy 2 verses 20-21 but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Prepared unto every good work. Here Paul uses the metaphor of a vessel in someone's home. Our sin will dishonor the vessel of our body, and make it useless in the battle. We should look to be used in every good work, which is everything that God is doing today in the dispensation of grace, 
we cannot be used as effectively if we have not purged the dishonorable things from our lives. 2 Timothy 2 verses 22 to 23 Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. Foolish and unlearned questions avoid, preach and teach sound doctrine, and if someone challenges you to try to get you to go in a different direction, respond to them and their challenge briefly, but get back on track with God's message. 2 Timothy 2 verses 24 to 26 And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, the attitude of a pastor is to be one of not striving with people over things in a way that will cause people to fear you. Some of those people can be turned around with a little work studying on our part. Do the same for others as Paul is admonishing Timothy to do. This is sorely missing by many grace believers on the internet. If God peradventure give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, the knowledge of the truth is the hidden wisdom that was revealed to the Apostle Paul that had been kept secret since the world began, but now has been made manifest. Titus 1 verses 1 to 3, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4 Who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. There are two things mentioned in this verse, not one, salvation, and a coming to a knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth is not a place where many ever get to, because they never learn to rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 3 verse 7 Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You can learn more Bible verses, but never learn to rightly divide the word of truth, and never come to the knowledge of the truth by understanding the difference in Israel's program and ours today. Titus 1 verses 1 to 3 Paul, a servant of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will, if have not come unto the knowledge of the truth then you have been taken captive by the devil. You got caught in his snare that says you are spiritual Israel. Chapter 3 The Last Days 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. In the last days, Paul warns Timothy that at the end of the age of grace the perilous times shall come all over the world and not just in the church. This is how the world will be behaving as the rapture of the church gets closer. There are the last days of Israel's prophecy program which will occur in the tribulation period, known as the time of Jacob's trouble Jeremiah 30 verse 7, and there are the last days of the dispensation of grace. Paul is speaking to us here, not Israel. 2 Timothy 3 verse 2 For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. It is almost as if God let Paul take a look into the future unto the day that we are living in right now. We live in a very selfish society where each looks out for their own self instead of the needs of others. They curse God without any fear of anyone saying anything to them concerning it. 2 Timothy 3 verse 3 Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Without natural affection, this is that which between a man and a woman. Women who kill their own children in abortion clinics, and then call those who oppose what they are doing as intolerant. Satan is the prince of the power of the air, and he unleashed his army of politically correct fallen angels to demonize anyone who would dare to say there was anything that is contrary to his plan to degrade humanity. 2 Timothy 3 verses 4 to 5 Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Parents today teach this generation that you work hard so that you can travel the world, party, and buy lots of toys, and who cares about going to church and learning about God and his plan for us. 2 Timothy 3 verses 6 to 7 For of this sort, are they which creep into houses, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, you may think that these are nice people, but they are leading people away from the scriptures rightly divided, and should be avoided at all cost. They despise dispensationalist, and dispensationalism, because it is contrary to their tradition that they have been taught, and cannot swallow their pride, when they are faced with the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy 3 verses 8 to 9 Now as Jans and Jambers withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, 
for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. So do these also resist the truth. Moses stood toe to toe with Jans and Jambers there with Pharaoh, and they opposed the truth that was right before their eyes. When Moses' snake devoured the magicians, they did not repent. When they could not match all of Moses' plagues with their little parlor tricks, they still did not repent, but actually fought against God. They will give an account for all they have misled, and for all the money they have swindled from little old ladies who truly want the gospel to go out, who have been led captive by these charlatans who reject God's word rightly divided. 2 Timothy 3 verses 10 to 11 But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. But thou hast fully know my doctrine, the world should fully know Paul's doctrine, the mystery program for the church, and his manner of life, his purpose, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, as Timothy did. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, Paul suffered greatly so that we might have the wisdom of God to guide our lives by. Acts 13 and 14 Timothy was most likely there when Paul was stoned and left for dead outside the city, Acts 14. And if anyone knew Timothy knew that God gave Paul the strength to get back up and to do it all over again. 2 Timothy 3 verse 12 Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you live godly, those who promote anti-biblical positions will attack you and call you narrow-minded bigots. 2 Timothy 3 verse 13, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Churches keep going farther and farther away from the truth, and the world keeps getting worse day by day. 2 Timothy 3 verse 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. The things which thou hast learned, these were revealed to Paul almost 2,000 years ago by Christ, and they still work. Unfortunately, the devil has been very successful at keeping the mystery program for the body of Christ a mystery. Of whom thou hast learned them, Timothy knew that the things he learned from Paul were the words of God for this age, and in them we have the mind of God, and the tools necessary to do battle against the forces of hell. 2 Timothy 3 verse 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. The holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, Timothy knew the scriptures, and when he heard about Christ, he recognized that God had fulfilled his promises and gave to the earth their Savior, and the world rejected him, and he was saved. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus, this is speaking about a person's faith, not the faith of Jesus Christ which is found in Galatians 2 verse 16. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 to 17 All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the men of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. The word inspiration means to be God-breathed. Doctrine is God's word about what we are to believe in this current dispensation. Reproof is similar to correction, but it is a bit harsher correction. The men of God, 1 Timothy 6 verse 11. Perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. The word perfect means a finished product, a fully mature believer, one who understands the manifold wisdom of God. The good works are those things that Paul did to establish believers and churches. Chapter 4 Follow Paul 2 Timothy 4 verse 1 I charge thee therefore before God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. The quick and the dead, the quick is a reference to the ones who have been made alive in Christ. The dead of course are the dead in Christ. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account one day. Romans 8 verse 11 But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Acts 10 verse 42 And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. 1 Peter 4 verse 5 Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. At his appearing in his kingdom, at his appearing in the clouds to meet us, and his kingdom which is mentioned in more detail below. And it is not what some would think naturally, it is speaking about us in the body of Christ. 2 Timothy 4 verse 2 Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. Preach the word, Paul charges Timothy to stick with it as long as he lives, regardless of how long he may suffer, whether it is popular or unpopular, preach whatever needs to be preached to whoever listens. 2 Timothy 4 verses 3 to 4 For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, 
and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. The time will come, Paul is speaking about a time in the dispensation of grace when the people would not endure sound doctrine. That day had begun already in Asia with the churches Paul had started many years earlier. After their own lusts, the Apostle James says that each man is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, and that is true in any dispensation. Something in our flesh is attracted to something being offered up by the devil and people are enticed, drawn away, to people who will say what they want to hear. James 1 verse 14 But every man is tempted, when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. 2 Peter 3 verse 3 Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. Jude 1 verse 16 These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. The sign gifts for the nation of Israel ceased near the end of the first century, and they will not return until this age ends at the rapture. So these teachers play on people's desire, lusts, to be healed when it is not for today, it is a fable, and that spreads false hope, and leads to great discouragement. 2 Timothy 4 verse 5 But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Do the work of an evangelist, today many evangelists know little or nothing of Paul's ministry, because they are too busy ensnared by the love of money. 2 Timothy 4 verse 6 For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I am now ready to be offered, Paul was ready to die for his faith, and that is exactly what happened not too long after this epistle was written, but that could not shut the mouths of all the faithful men that Paul had poured himself into over the years sharing the fellowship of the mystery with. 2 Timothy 4 verses 7 to 8 I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I have finished my course, Paul filled full the scriptures that God dispensed to him to dispense to us. He trained men to follow his example in starting churches and equipping them, and he made it to Rome to appear before Caesar. Unto all them also that love his appearing, people justify their actions all in the name of Christ, because they say they love his appearing. Well, I am not so sure they are going to enjoy that day when they give an account for how much truth versus error they have distributed. 2 Timothy 4 verses 9 to 10 Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Do thy diligence to come unto me shortly, this was said because the time of Paul's departure was at hand. Paul wanted to see Timothy again before he died, but that most likely never happened. Paul grew lonely as he got closer to his execution date. People tend to leave when they do not want to have the same fate as you. Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, Demas departed from Christ by departing from Paul, because it got too rough for him, and he wanted to go back to the world he once knew of greater ease. Whether Crescens and Titus left for good reasons or not, we do not know, but Paul was all alone now. 2 Timothy 4 verses 11 to 12 Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. Only Luke is with me, there was no large entourage following Paul now, because it was now up to the churches that they established to carry on the work he had started. Why was Luke with Paul at this time? He was there for his trial before Nero, because both Luke and the Book of Acts are legal treatises written as a defense for Paul before Caesar. Acts 1 and Luke 1, they are both written to the most excellent Theopolis, a Roman official. No one could stand before Caesar without his case being laid out in advance. God is so amazing that he uses Rome's money and machine to get the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts published throughout Rome, and who knows where else. Take Mark and bring him with thee, Mark was a kingdom saint, and Paul was a grace age saint, and he had the authority to tell Timothy to bring Mark with him. The kingdom program was now set aside for the nation of Israel, and the gospel of the grace of God was all that God was offering as hope to the whole world. 2 Timothy 4 verse 13 The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, it is very cold in Mamertine prison. Paul knew how to be abased and how to abound, this was not one of those abounding times. Paul had very little of his own, as he was on death row, and many of his supporting churches were now ashamed of him. All of Asia had turned their back on Paul, especially the parchments, scrolls of the word of God. 2 Timothy 4 verses 14 to 15 Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil, the Lord reward him according to his works, of whom be thou were also, 
for he hath greatly withstood our words. Alexander the coppersmith, he is mentioned in Paul's first epistle, as one of the two that Paul had delivered unto Satan, so that they would learn not to blaspheme. Second Timothy for verses 16 to 18, at my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me, I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. At my first answer not, men stood with me, this is a reference of the first time Paul stood before the emperor when no one but the Lord himself stood with him. Some could not be there because of the great distance, or they were away on a mission, but there were some who could have been there and were not. I am reminded of the forgiving words of Christ as he was breathing his last breaths, and he cried out to his father to forgive them, Israel, for they know not what they do. I am also reminded of Stephen, and how Paul was an eyewitness of his death and a participant in it as Stephen begged God to not lay his murder to their charge. Paul must have been as moved by Stephen's act of forgiveness as Stephen was of Christ's, that it compelled him to act in the same manner. By me, the preaching might be fully known. Paul mentions that by him the preaching of the mystery might be fully known which implies that it was to be proclaimed clearly and fully by the apostle of grace, and so that all the Gentiles would hear the good news. What better place to get the gospel out than at Rome, and in the palace where there would be all kinds of people from all over the empire there watching, listening reporting on the things that were going on there. Preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, Paul's salvation was secured in Christ, because he was in Christ, and there is northwest safer place to be for anyone today. Are you in Christ today by trusting in the gospel that Paul preached, or are you still in Adam? If you are still in Adam, you will spend eternity in hell separated from God because you did not accept the free gift of God which is eternal life. You do not have to my friend. Trust the finished work of Christ on your behalf as the complete payment for your sins. Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead on the third day. The earthly kingdom is where Israel under the law was promised to spend eternity with Christ, whereas the heavenly kingdom is the destiny for the church, which is Christ's body, who are saved by grace through faith today. 2 Timothy 4 verses 19 to 20 Salute Prisca and Aquila, and the household of Anisiphorus. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. Prisca and Aquila, Acts 18 verses 2 and 18, 16, Romans 16 verse 3, and 1 Corinthians 16 verse 19. Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. Why at the end of Paul's last epistle do we find Paul leaving his companion in his condition? Because he could no longer heal anyone. Now the world could see through a glass clearly instead of darkly, because all of the scriptures that were needed to bring the body of Christ to maturity were written. That which was perfect had come, the word of God was complete, so that which was in part was done away. 1 Corinthians 13 Paul could no longer send handkerchiefs out to people that could heal them because Israel had entered into her blindness. The sign gifts that were necessary to provoke the Jews to jealousy were no longer going to be given to a nation that would not repent. 2 Timothy 4 verses 21 to 22 Do thy diligence to come before winter. Eubulus greeteth thee and Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. The second epistle unto Timotheus, ordained the first bishop of the church of the Ephesians, was written from Rome, when Paul was brought before Nero the second time. Do thy diligence to come before winter, Paul knew he could be executed at any moment, so he wanted to see his beloved Timothy one last time to personally encourage him. For Timothy to wait too long would mean he would have to wait until after winter had come and gone. Paul, even in his last days, was busy doing whatever he could do to make more people see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Let us pattern our life after the pattern God gave to the body of Christ. The End